In this lesson, you're going to learn English with music, and we're going to review the lyrics to the song "Someone Like You" by Adele. Let's get started. Welcome to our song, a very popular. Older but very popular song. So we'll go through the song together, and I'll explain some of the most common vocabulary. So let's start right here. I heard that you're settled down. Settled down. This is a common phrasal verb. To settle down means that you accept responsibility. And you live a calmer life. This is generally a natural thing that happens when people are in their early twenties, mid twenties. Some people take longer to settle down. Some people take until they're thirty, thirty-five, forty, or even later <laughs> to settle down. Now, generally, when you settle down, you get married, you buy a house, you have kids, you find a stable job. All of these are the accept responsibility and live a calmer life. Settle down. Now we. Use settle down in a different context that's perhaps more common for your daily use, especially as a student in the classroom. Because notice this word here: calm, calmer. When you settle down, it is also used to tell everyone to calm down. So if you're in a classroom and you're a teacher and All these students are just talking to each other, making a lot of noise. You would say, "Settle down, settle down." So you're telling everyone to calm, calm down. So it's also used in that context when a teacher or a parent or even a boss might say, "Everyone, settle." Down, and in this case, it's the same as the phrasal verb "calm down," which simply means to become calmer. To become calmer. Notice for pronunciation, there's no L in this word. It's not "call" with an L. No, it's "calm." Om,、um. and notice the vowel even. It's an "a." Om,、um, om,、um, calm, calm down, calm down. I heard that you're settled down. So Adele heard that the person that she used to be in a romantic relationship with has now settled down. So he's probably married someone else. That you found a girl. Oh yes, <laughs> and you're married now. So as we discussed, this is an aspect of settling down, which is. Finding a stable relationship. I heard that your dreams came true. Guess she gave you things I didn't give to you. So Adele is saying, "Well, you chose this other woman to settle down with. So likely because she gave you things, maybe love, attention, respect, whatever those things were." That I didn't give you. Now notice it's guess, guess. This is when you say I guess because of course Adele doesn't know one hundred percent for certain that that's the reason that her ex boyfriend chose to settle down with another woman instead of her. Right. So she's using I guess to say there's some doubt. Doubt, uncertainty, not one hundred percent certain. The subject is missing here. This is commonly done in spoken English. Instead of saying "I guess," you can just say "guess." Guess she gave you things. I guess she's late because she missed her bus. Okay. So you might be discussing why a coworker is late. Oh, I guess she's late because she missed her bus. You can also get rid of this part. I guess. I guess she missed her bus. So the question could be, why do you think Sarah is late? I guess she missed her bus. Your 
not 100% certain. So there's some doubt or uncertainty there. I guess she missed her bus. Old friend, why are you so shy? Ain't like you to hold back or hide from the light. Let's talk about this word. I know students ask a lot of questions about the word ain't, ain't. You need to know that ain't is slang. It is slang in spoken English. I don't use ain't in my speech because I don't really speak with a lot of slang. And I don't recommend that you use it, to be honest. But the word ain't, even though it's slang and I recommend avoiding it in spoken or written English, it is extremely common in music, extremely common. Even with musicians who wouldn't use slang in their regular speech, they still use it in music. Why? It's simply because ain't is a one syllable word and it's easier to say. And in music, the timing is very important. It's the rhythm, it's the beat of the song. So it's just a lot easier to say the word ain't. Now, in this case, ain't means is not. It isn't or is not, which means isn't as a contraction. So notice, isn't, isn't, two syllables, ain't, ain't, one syllable. Rhythmically, it's easier to say ain't and it changes the sound of the song. And that's why it's just very common in music. It isn't like you to hold back, ain't like you to hold back. Again, I don't recommend using it in spoken English, but you will hear it all the time in music. What does it mean to hold back? This is when you stop yourself from showing an emotion or you stop yourself from sharing your opinion. For example, I held back my anger in the meeting today. If we're talking about an emotion, you would identify the emotion. I held back my anger, my frustration, my jealousy. Generally, it's negative emotions because generally we want to share positive emotions. But you might hold back your delight if you got promoted and your coworker also wanted the promotion, but your coworker didn't get the promotion, you got it. You might hold back your excitement, your happiness, because you don't want to make the other person feel bad. So it is common to hold back a positive emotion, but it is more generally used with negative emotions. Now, in this case, if you just use it in a general context, you should have held back, it means you shouldn't have shared your opinion. You shouldn't have shared your opinion, your opinion. Now notice, you should have held back. Saying this positively means you shouldn't have shared your opinion. Because if you didn't hold back, it means you did share your opinion. So we're in a meeting and I say, you know what, everyone? I think this project is a terrible idea. Why are we even doing this? Just now, I didn't hold back. I shared my opinion. Now, my coworker might say, why did you say that, Jennifer? You should have held back. You shouldn't have shared your opinion. So Adele is saying that it's not like her ex-boyfriend to 
either not share his emotions or not share his opinion. So maybe they're talking, but he isn't really discussing his new life with his new wife, his new house, his new kids, things like that. Let's continue on. I hate to turn up out of the blue. Okay, right here. We have a phrasal verb to turn up and we have an idiom out of the blue. Out of the blue means unexpected. Unexpected. Now she says uninvited, but it's almost implied with the expression out of the blue. Because if you turn up, which I should tell you what this means, I hate to turn up. This just means arrive at a place. Now, most likely Adele turned up at her ex-boyfriend's house. Knock, knock. Oh my God, it's my ex-girlfriend. Out of the blue. I wasn't expecting to see my ex-girlfriend at my house, which I own with my new wife, <laughs> right? So she arrived at a place. We don't know what the place is, but most likely it's his house. It could also be his work. It could be his favorite restaurant. And she knows he goes to that restaurant every Friday night and Adele turned up out of the blue. She arrived at that restaurant because she knew he would be there and it was unexpected. He did not know she was going to come uninvited, but I couldn't stay away. I couldn't fight it. So if you stay away, it means you leave him alone. You don't turn up and you don't turn up out of the blue, which means unexpected. So of course she didn't say, Hey, I'm coming over. If she texted him and said, I'm coming over, that isn't out of the blue because it's expected. Now we use out of the blue a lot. You might say my boss gave me a promotion out of the blue, which is a really good thing, right? My boss gave me a promotion out of the blue, which means I wasn't expecting it. I didn't know that he was giving promotions to anyone. He didn't mention that out of the blue, out of the blue. Notice the pronunciation of this because we really combine these two words to sound like out of, out of, out of the blue, out of the blue. My boss gave me a promotion out of the blue, out of the blue. All right, let's continue on. I had hoped you'd see my face and that you'd be reminded. Okay, so Adele turns up, she arrives at his house and she had hoped that her boyfriend, her ex-boyfriend would see her and be like, I miss you. I miss you. I'm so happy you're here because you'd be reminded. So when you're reminded of something or someone, you have memories of them. So maybe her ex-boyfriend, he sees her and then all of a sudden these positive memories come back to him. That for me, it isn't over. So by saying it isn't over, Adele is saying she still has feelings for this man. She's still in love with him because we use this a lot in a romantic context. It's over. It's over. If I say to you this to you, what am I doing? It's over. I'm ending our relationship. So this is used to end a romantic relationship. It's over. It's over. But Adele is saying, for me, it isn't over. I still love you. I still have feelings for you. Never mind. I'll find someone like you. So now the song, although she's confessing, admitting she still loves this man, now she's changing to saying, I'll find someone like you. So I'll find another man who has the same characteristics, 
personality, maybe even appearance that you have. I wish nothing but the best for you. Don't forget me. I beg. So when you beg, you're saying, please, please, please. So this is a verb to beg. You might say, I begged my boss to let me leave early today, but he said no. Children beg their parents all the time. Oh, please, please. Can you buy me this? Can you take me here? Can you do this for me? Children commonly beg. Adults, it's not, I guess, as common to beg, but still possible. I begged my boss to let me leave. Notice you beg someone to do something. That's the sentence structure. So you might say, my kids have been begging me to take them to (laughs) Disney World. This is something that I personally begged my dad to do over and over again as a child. And he never did take me to (laughs) Disney World. So it did not work. It was not successful for me. But who knows? Maybe it's successful for you. And then... So how do you beg? You just simply ask over and over again, or you try to provide different reasons why. I'll remember you said, sometimes it lasts in love, but sometimes it hurts instead. So that's a very poetic thing to say. If it lasts, obviously it means you're, you stay together as a couple. If it hurts, it's probably because The relationship is over and he said, it's over, it's over. And then she repeats it. Sometimes it lasts, but sometimes it hurts instead. You know how the time flies. I think a lot of students know this expression because they have it in their own native language as well. But when time flies, this is an idiom to simply say that time moves very quickly. Time flies. So if you're working on a project and then all of a sudden you look at your watch and it's five hours later, you can say, wow, time flies, time flies. Only yesterday was the time of our lives. We were born and raised in a summer haze. I don't know what a summer haze is, to be honest. Bound by the surprise of our glory days. I hate to turn up. Okay, we already reviewed this. I hate to turn up out of the blue. Okay, we reviewed this. And then this is the chorus. So we reviewed this as well. Here's a different part of the song. Nothing compares. No worries or cares. Regrets and mistakes They are memories made. Let's take a look at regrets. A regret is something that you wish you didn't do or say. So something you wish you didn't do or say. The important thing about regret is, is that it is a gerund verb. I regret breaking up with him. So, oh, sorry. I regret. The gerund comes the verb that follows regret. So we have regret. And then the next verb that follows it is the gerund. I regret. And then our verb ing, which is our gerund verb. I regret breaking up with him. I regret quitting my job. I regret not quitting my job. So this is something you wish you didn't do or say. In this case, regret 
is used as a noun in the song because you can have regrets, which are things you wish you hadn't done or said. I have a lot of regrets. Or hopefully, I don't have a lot of regrets because you did and said exactly what you wanted to do and say. Who would have known how bittersweet this would taste? When you describe something as bittersweet, it means that it's both negative and positive. The negative you can think of as sadness and the positive happiness. Here's an example sentence. You can say getting a promotion was bittersweet. Now, of course, the happiness of a promotion is the fact that it pays more money, you have a nicer job title, maybe you have some extra perks, more responsibility, more interesting work, more fulfillment. Those are the positives, the happy part of a promotion. What could be the negative, the sad part of the promotion? Maybe you're no longer working with the people you used to work with because the promotion requires you to go to another part of the company. Maybe you're working way longer hours and you're not spending as much time with your family. And that's the negative part of it. So getting a promotion was bittersweet. This is a great expression to use as a gerund statement. A gerund statement is a sentence that starts with ing. So we start with our gerund verb. And you can use this to make more of a statement, a general statement. So you can try this and notice the expression is to be bittersweet, to be bittersweet. And here, of course, I have my verb to be conjugated in the past simple. I could say getting a promotion is bittersweet if I want to say that the emotions are still taking place now, but maybe my promotion was last year. So I'm more talking about at that time of that transition, it was bittersweet. So maybe finishing university was bittersweet. Of course, it was positive because you don't have to study anymore, but it's negative because of whatever reason. <laughs> so lots of things. So you can try an example in the comments and try it with a gerund statement and don't forget to conjugate your verb to be. Okay, and this is the same, our bag. This is the, I'm seeing if anything is different, but it looks like it is the exact same thing. And then she just repeats it. And that is the end of the song. So what I recommend now is to click the link here. This PDF is available in the description and it's available in the first comment and you can click the link here and then you can listen to the song with the lyrics and you can follow along. You can listen to the pronunciation as well and hear all of your new vocabulary in the song and share in the comments as well. What's your favorite new word from the song? I'm excited to know. I hope you enjoyed this song. Now, I want you to keep improving your English with this lesson. And if you haven't already, make sure you go to my website and get this free speaking guide to help you speak English fluently and confidently. You can click the link right here. So get started with your next lesson right now.